Hi, my name is Thaya Akbaba, and I will be presenting Troubling Collaboration, Matters of Care for Visualization Design Study. I'm presenting on behalf of my co-authors, Devin Wang, Michael Correll, Alexander Lex, and Mariah Meyer. Like I said, hi, my name is Daria. I'm a visualization researcher. I study how data visualizations work in the world, and often this means that I collaborate with scientists, observing how they use data and visualizations in their daily workflows, and then I create some visualization tool that will solve their problems. This way of collaborating with the domain experts is common in visualization research and goes by the name design study. This is a commonly used process model from Settlemeyer and colleagues and is a good example to represent how these collaborations work in the world. It starts off with a visualization PI establishing a collaboration with some domain expert. Then the Viz grad student goes off to learn about the domain problem. During this core period of discovery for the grad student, there's a lot of upfront time and commitment given by the collaborator. They often prepare and share data sets and help the VIS student understand their domain. The domain experts often have years, even decades of experience, so the knowledge gap is quite large. Afterward, the VIS researcher designs and deploys a novel visualization tool. In exchange for the expert's time, they are given this VIS tool. You can think of this way of collaborating as service-oriented. And then when all of this is done, the Viz researchers go off to reflect and write a paper. But that's it. Notice there's nothing else after analysis. In our own experience, this left us deeply uncomfortable. It felt like somehow we were just abandoning our collaborators after we gave them a tool and submitted a paper. In fact, we found ourselves wondering, what is the impact that we have on our collaborators? And maybe more tangibly, what happens to the tools that we build? In previous work, Meyer and Dykes identified these concerns as an ethics of exit, essentially posing the question of whether we are collaborating in an ethical way by looking at the lasting impacts of collaborations. And so to solve an ethical problem, we turn to an ethical framework, specifically ethics of care. Care has a long history across many fields, but we ground our work in feminist technoscience. Specifically, we draw on the work by Puig de la Bella Casa, where she introduced the term matters of care as a set of ethical considerations and reflections on how research is conducted. The term matters of care represent both what researchers may care about and as the set of ethics that guide the researcher. Care, though, is quite different from normative ethics. Normally, when you think of ethics, there's this clearish delineation between what is right and what is wrong, a kind of universal prescription. Kurt, care turns this on its head and says that ethics are relational and emerge from interpersonal dynamics that are situated and context dependent. As a feminist ethic, we cannot ignore the role of power. Certain types of care come from positions of power and access to resources. Matters of care accentuated that the structure of design study is embedded with power dynamics between and across the visualization researchers and their collaborators. This results in different levels of agency and power throughout the collaboration. Care is also a reminder that while some things have our attention, others are neglected. Again, Matters of Care highlights that neglect is inherent in the structure of design study. Maintenance and concern for the collaborator are omitted from these process models. In this work, we contribute the results of an interview study that was analyzed through a lens of care. This helped us trouble and rethink current collaborative visualization practices. Specifically in the paper, we highlight the challenges surrounding the long-term maintenance of visualization tools which we identify as a neglected aspect of visualization guidelines. And we describe stories of power asymmetries that are inherent to collaborations. We contribute a set of provocations and considerations to work toward more careful design studies. In this talk, I will only cover a few anecdotes about maintenance, but obviously I encourage you to read the paper to learn more. The body of our work is based on interviews with 22 participants that worked on visualization collaborations, ranging from collaborators in STEM fields to the humanities, 
In four instances, we were able to speak to a Viz grad student, their PI, and the domain expert. To be completely honest, before we went into these interviews, I expected to hear stories of frustration and guilt, graduate students' needs being overlooked, and maintenance being neglected. In hindsight, I think my perspective was too simple. Simple because everyone we spoke to cared, and also maintenance turned out to be way more complicated than I originally expected. For example, maintenance showed up in different shapes and sizes. In some instances, there were engineering teams that took student prototypes and built them out further. In other instances, projects were put on GitHub as open source code. And then there were some instances where the students took on the responsibility to maintain the visualization tool, even after graduating from their PhD. In these instances, the graduate students cited personal relationships with their collaborators as the reason why they wouldn't ab abandon the project. One of the graduate students pointedly said, I mean, after three years, you work together with like three other people. You become friends, right? So if they ask for help, you cannot say, no, the project is done. You cannot do this, right? Because the personal relationship is something important in everything you do. Hearing this really affected me. It showed dedication to collaborators that was so personal, but it was also at the expense of the graduate student's personal time. In other instances, we heard that maintenance just doesn't matter. One PI summarized this nicely. I have thought about, you know, studies where you go back five years later and you talk to all these people and you're like, are you still using your system? And I bet the answer will be no. And if not, why not? And you know, it's going to be that the software bit rotted or the data pipeline died or actually turns out it wasn't useful or I don't even know if it was useful because blah, blah, left the company and actually have all collaborators left the company and none of us are there anymore. So like there are all these reasons why people don't use your research prototypes in the long run. And I sort of agonize about that as a researcher. I'll pause here because I think this is super important. We started our interviews wondering about the lasting impact of visualization research, but it's not clear that we can have an impact for our collaborators if the tools we are building are not relevant in a couple of months. It turned out that there were way more benefits to collaborating though than just receiving a tool. One domain expert spoke about how the collaboration changed her perception of the research. This, this has changed my perception of the research forever. I can now choose to look at my research in a more traditional way or in this data oriented way. And the visualization tool doesn't matter because of course I had this experience with the visualization researchers. Another researcher mentioned the benefits of collaborating as an opportunity to reflect on his data. And it was also good to reflect on the data because when you're explaining your data, you're also reflecting on it and thinking about what kind of data do I really have, which is also something you don't always think about. That was also helpful. So what can we really say about maintenance and visualization collaborations? Well, maintenance is neglected in our process models and guidelines. But maintenance is not always relevant. And in fact, there are benefits that exist beyond the tool. So the question is, what do we do with this? We suggest approaching design studies more carefully. This means that when we collaborate, we should think about maintenance before the end of the collaboration, rather than as an afterthought or something that is ignored. Or alternatively, we can think about designing for the graveyard. If we accept that our tools will be defunct and not useful in the month after we leave, what are the design spaces that it might open up? Another alternative to maintenance might be to meet our collaborators halfway and dump bespoke tools in the trash. Developing new software and maintaining it is a large socio-technical endeavor. We could imagine developing Viz libraries that plug into the existing software that our collaborators are using. This would mean that we stop building one-off systems and tools and focus on contributing to the existing tools. And finally, a lens of care also means that we can look beyond the tool and beyond maintenance to have an impact. This might mean seeking opportunities during the collaboration to share knowledge and skills with collaborators. 
maybe that looks like some data counseling work, or maybe it's generating visualizations for presentations and reports. The point is that our collaborator won't need to wait till the end of the collaboration to see the benefits. When we start to pay attention to care, I think we will find different ways to impact our collaborators. And so these were the only few stories about neglect, but in the paper we cover power asymmetries and other provocations to conduct careful design studies. With that, I end this presentation. Thank you so much for listening. You can find the paper and abundant supplemental material at this QR code. Bye.